What's up Game Leap, it's Coach Eeks back at it, hope you're all having a cracking day. In this video we are going to be covering the best roles to main for Season 11. The patch we're on right now, 1025, is the last one before the first of Season 11, so we can already put our money on what roles are going to perform better than others. Now patch 11.1 .1 is scheduled for January 6, so if you want to prepare as best you can for the season which is just around the corner, this video will give you everything you need so stay tuned. Now for the question of the video, we want to know what role you are thinking of maining for Season 11. 11 and why. For me, I'm going to stick to what I know best and that's running it down on Shaco, but I'd love to know what you guys are planning too, so let me know. Alright guys, let's get into it. Now the worst role to play for Season 11 or the 5th best is AD Carry. If you are an ADC main, you can still win games of course, but let me tell you, your desk is not safe. It's going to be frustrating as heck because your role is that bad, so let's find out why. Now back in the first patch of the preseason, 10-23, Riot Silver Balance Team, and Gold maybe, came up with the ingenious idea of changing or nerfing thing the way critical strike worked. In this day and age, mythic and legendary items offer a maximum of 20% crit chance and the base damage of these crits is 175%. Now this might sound good, but if you remember back to season 10, crit items granted 25% critical strike chance and these had a base damage of 200%. So any AD carries that build critical strike chance and some even scale off crit like Aphelios are as useful as a wet paper bag. This is why AD carries like Jin and Misfortune dominated the early preseason because they they could build Lethality, Eclipse, Ghostblade, Edge of Night, you're not going to see a vein building this now are you? Now think about this, with the old critical strike system at 3 crit items which was the real peak of an in game AD carry, you had 75% critical strike chance with each one having a base damage of 200%. Compare this to 3 items now, and you only have 60% critical strike chance and each one deals less damage. Essentially, you need another crit item this time around to reach the power of last season, and some of these items aren't exactly cheap. The AD Mythics are 3400 gold each, as are Runan's Hurricane, Navori Quickblades, the new Bloodthirster, and Infinity Edge. Now what I'm trying to say here guys, is that it takes longer for you to come online, and even when you do, your damage isn't what it was. Now before we go on about why Hell's AD carries the runt of the rolls, if you want to make the most out of League of Legends, and your potential head on over to our website gameleap.com. Join our thousands of members and get signed up for access to our Red Hot Challenger content. Links will be in the description and comment section. Right back to it. So the other big reason why you should steer clear of playing ADC is because of the meta. Out of the top 20 champions in the game according to win rates, there is one ADC, Tristana. That's it. What makes it incredibly difficult is that it's even harder to survive these days than it usually is. Tanks are unkillable but one shot you. Bruises are also impossible to deal with for the same reasons and high damage mid laners can one shot you in a heartbeat. Every other role power spikes a lot more with the other mythic items so as an AD carry you fall behind the other 8 champions in your game by default. Because it's a lot easier to die this also increases your dependency on your support to support you and guess what in lower elos these don't really exist nor care if you die or not. I mean it's that dire at the moment that some AD carries like Ash and Misfortune has seen play and more success I should add as supports because their mythic items actually work. What's even more enraging is that despite buffs to each AD Mythic and some Zeal items, Marksmen still suck. So unless Riot revert crit back to what it was in Season 10, or significantly buff AD carries all their items, tread very carefully when you head to that bot lane. Moving on to the 4th best role for Season 11, and it should be noted that the rest of these roles are actually all good, so pick your fancy. Now if you want to main jungle next season, good on you, and this is number 4. Now the main reason jungle is still a great role to pick is because for most champions the new mythic items actually work, compared to AD carries that is. The consistently best junglers in this preseason squeeze every ounce of power out of their mythic of choice. For example, if you pick Nunu, you have Sunfire Aegis, which we all know about by now. If you pick Olaf, you have Gore Drinker, which makes you unkillable. If you pick Hecarim, you have Trinity Force and Divine Sunderer, which can either snowball your lead or give you the damage you need to cut through enemy tanks. These power spikes matter. Now, way back in 1023, the old jungle items got binned and replaced by two new items. Hailblade, which is essentially Blue Smite, and Ember Knife, which is essentially Red Smite. For 350 gold, most jungle to get everything they need. Sustain, mana regen, damage over time, and the smite itself. Now for junglers who were not relying on the old warrior, Cinderhulk, Bloodraiser, and Echoes, this change is so good. Think of Hecarim for example. Now the Hail and Blade and Ember Knife changes in 1025 have hurt junglers across the board, especially AP junglers, which is why jungler is number 4 on our list. So back in Season 10, jungle mages relied on Runic Echoes because it gave them 3 things. Ability power, cooldown reduction, and mana. This doesn't exist anymore, and mana is the big
big stat loss. The only way you can now acquire mana is through the mythic items unless you want to run it down and buy frozen heart. So this means until that point, in fact even after that point, if you don't have blue buff you are going to burn through that resource like a druggie does 420. This is why champions like Nidalee and Karthus are struggling, not to mention these mana mythics are 3400 gold as well. Now back to the bright side, there are other reasons why jungle is a good role but they are all very general. Yeah you can impact the map and gank lanes but we're talking about season 11 specifically and it is all item based at the moment. On the whole, junglers make good use of the new installments so your time will be well spent with smite in hand. Alright gang, the third best role for season 11 is top lane and this was very close to being second on our list so it's a strong third place at that. Now can you guess why top lane is good in season 11? The items, yes. Now top lane hasn't changed right, the minion ways, the length of the lane, the walls, the brushes, but your itemization has. Let's think of the various top laners you might play. So tanks, now what items do these blokes have? Well they have the Barmy Cinder Mythics and these items make them tankier but what's baffling is they give them so much damage and this was barely nerfed back in 1024 so almost all of it is still there. Malphite, Shen, Sion, Poppy, these beefy champs have always been at the top of the win rates this preseason and this will not change. What about bruises? Well this class of champions really has a range of mythics to choose from and that's what makes them good. If you want sustain you have Gore Drinker, if you need a smash for a few tanks you have Divine Sunderer, if you want a snowball you have Stride Breaker and Trinity Force. So many options gives you so many ways to win. So what else is there? There's a uh, ranged champions. Well if you're a Quinn or a Jace you have Eclipse and Lethality to work with and if you're a Teemo you have Leandra's Anguish all work incredibly well. Now there are some champions that haven't benefited as much and perhaps this is the reason top lane isn't number one on this list. Mordekaiser and Singe for example have been the really unlucky ones. Reason for their weak state? Well it's their item. Simple as that. So Riftmaker got nerfed later on in 1023 and has stayed the same since. Now the item is perfect for both but because it is outclassed by its peers these two champions are likewise outperformed. Regardless, only a few top laners are a little sketch heading into Season 11. The rest you can 1v9 with, so get around it. Here we go, the second best role to carry with in Season 11, and this may surprise you, is mid lane. Now most other videos might have said mid lane is one of the best roles because you have access to both side lanes and the jungle and your influence is generally felt more than other roles. This is true, I guess, but the real reason mid lane is great this season is because of the amount of good mythic and legendary items you have access to. Like we did for top lane, let's go through some classes of champions and think about why mid lane is one of the top roles. Let's start with AD Assassins. So you've got Prowler's Claw, you've got Eclipse, you've got Dustblade. Now if a Zed, Talon, Kiana gets to this power spike before everyone else in a game, it's over dude. It's over. The lethality is so strong early on and these items are cheaper than most other mythics, only costing 3200 gold. If we think about AP Assassins, there's Akali, there's Fizz, there's Echo, and these champions thrive off Night Harvester, Hextech, Rocket Belt, and occasionally Riftmaker. Like AD Assassins, if these chaps get to 3200 gold quickly, the game will be over before you can say COVID-19. Moving on to range mages, you have Luton's Tempest, Leandry's Anguish, and Everfrost. Now Everfrost hasn't seen any serious play compared to the other two because Leandry's and Luton's are arguably the best mythics in the game. They offer great stats and their passives give them a huge boost. For example, Annie has one of the highest win rates because she benefits from the movement speed in Luton's Tempest's passive. Last up, we have ranged ADs and this is why mid isn't the top role for next season. Luton is still decent but he has to buy Kraken Slayer, an AD mythic, which doesn't match the other mid lane mythics. Corky has been really cucked by the mana immune change which now only procs on physical abilities so buying tier is kind of pointless and you run him 24-7. The only ranged AD that really pops off is Jace because as we outlined earlier in the top lane the defender of tomorrow can build lethality and mana immune as well to dominate both the early game and late game. So there are a couple of champions not quite at that OP level but in the bigger picture mid lane is a dominant role for season 11. Before we reveal the number one role for season 11 guys, that's if you haven't used the process of elimination to work it out already, gameleap.com. If you want to be challenger, it's only one click away, so join thousands of others and do yourself a favor. Get signed up and indulge in our amazing content. Now the moment we've all been waiting for, best role in season 11 is support. Well, why is that? Well, support mythics plus supports equals OP. The spellcasters like Soraka, Sona, Janna, Lulu, Nami, Seraphine, you have Imperial Mandate and Moonstone Renewer, both with high win rates in all elos because they work that well. In fact, five of the top 20 win rate champions are spellcasting supports that use Mandate and Renewer, which goes to show how busted they are. They are also only 2500 gold, meaning that you can have your major items before anyone else and have a really big impact in every game. If you think of hard engaged supports like Leona, Tarek, Nautilus, these are still performing near the top because their go-to mythic Locket of the Iron Solari now costs 2500 gold, and crowd control is always going to be useful, especially in lower elo. 
Other supports like Brand and Swain have boasted some of the highest win rates out of all the champions this preseason because of how well their tick damage works in concert with Leandre's Anguish and Demonic Embrace. On top of all that, with ADCs being as weak as they are, supports have an easier time pressuring them in lane and killing them. So it's not just about the great mythic choices you have as a support, but also the current league landscape that puts you at the top of the list. Now, I hope this video gave you an insight on what to play next season, guys, and if you want more of it, do not forget to subscribe and turn on all notifications. Guys, thanks so much for watching. This has been Coach Eason. Until next time, peace.